Hola a todos, bienvenidos de nuevo a blogliterario.com. Volvemos hoy con una entrevista y ni más ni menos entrevistamos a M. W. Craven. Es un autor británico nacido en el condado de Cumbria, un condado donde transcurre gran parte o la mayoría de las novelas que escribe. Él eh, se alistó en el ejército con tan solo 16 años, luego estuvo 10 años viajando por el mundo y posteriormente especializó sus estudios en criminología. Actualmente se dedica exclusivamente a escribir y el año pasado se lanzó en España, se estrenó en España este libro, El Show de las Marionetas, el primero de la serie de Washington Poe, un libro, una novela negra, un thriller del todo espectacular y podéis ver la reseña que hicimos en su día a través de este enlace, una novela negra muy pero que muy recomendada. Y también de la mano de Roca Editorial acaba de salir al mercado este libro, Verano Negro. El segundo de la serie de Washington Poe, también novela negra, thriller y también del todo espectacular. Lo hemos leído y también podéis ver la reseña a través de este enlace. Muy, pero que muy recomendado. Si sois fans de Washington Poe, no os perdáis para nada esta entrevista porque habrá más libros y hablaremos de ellos. Vamos pues con la entrevista a M. W. Craven. Good morning, Mr. Craven. Thank you very much for this interview. Excellent. Lovely to be here. Um, first of all, uh, we'll start uh, with some short questions. Okay. After that, we, we are going to do some questions about you, like a writer. And after that, we'll tell, uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, Washington Poe series. That is the most successful books that you are written. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's start with the short questions. The, fir the first one is, <clears throat> first book you read that you have a good memory of? Yeah, it's um, Watership Down by uh, Richard Adams, a book about rabbits. And uh, it's, it's a really cool book. If anyone hasn't read it, I would advise them to, to uh, get themselves a copy. It's got some really nice mythology in it. And it's it's quite brutal in places. It's it's a children's book, but it's actually quite terrifying, and it probably scarred me for life. But it's still one of my favorite books of all time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, I think that you are answering the next question. That is uh, your favorite book. Actually, my favorite book is Night Watch by Terry Pratchett. Uh, Terry Pratchett is my favorite author of all time. He's not my favorite crime author. I'll, I'll come into, on onto that, but. Um, Night Watch is my favorite book in my favorite series by my favorite author. Oh, okay. And uh, which uh, your favorite author? Uh, that'll be Michael Connolly, oh, okay. um, the American crime writer, and I, I, I think he is the undisputed um, leader in our our field. Whatever he does is absolutely excellent. Yes, I've read uh, some books uh, from. From him, I, I, I totally agree. Yeah. And even his TV series and films are excellent as well. They, 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 they come across really well on screen as well. They, they transfer very easily. Yes, I, I think that is, it was one of my favorite authors just uh, before Know You. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> so uh, next question is, uh, which is uh, your favorite time and place of reading? I... I like reading in the morning, um, first thing when I, when I wake up, because I know I'm not going to drift off to sleep. I, I enjoy reading at the weekends, just whenever I don't have anything specific to do. But at night, I think, is when I uh, re read most. If I'm reading a, a sort of um, a, a physical book, I could read for as long as I want to. If I'm reading a Kindle or, a, or an iPad or something like that, I... I can just wake up three hours later and I'm still holding it like, like that. So, um, yeah, at night time's from my favorite time. And when I'm in bed, when I'm sitting down, when I'm in the office, sometimes it's just, it, it's all good. I always take a book out with me. If I'm, if I'm, wherever I'm going, particularly if I'm on my own, I'll always have a book with me. Um, just because if you've got spare 10 minutes, if you're waiting for something or you're waiting for someone, yeah, a book's a very small, easy thing to carry around. And so, rather than just stare at my phone like everyone else. Yeah. And uh, what do you think is, uh, what do you consider essential in a book? 
you know, I, I, I get asked this quite a lot. And I always say plot or <sighs> character. Now, it, it's, a, it's a hard one to, I, I mean, I, I think essentially it's got, to have, it's got to have both. And the, way, the reason I say it's not just about plot is because some of the Michael Conley books, it's more, some of the fun parts for me are just how Harry Bosch for example, reacts to someone. You almost know what's going to happen, how he's going to react to being told not to do something, that type of thing. So that's very much a character-driven part of the story. The plot has to be interesting. Ultimately, because uh, I, I, I have to do with sort of um, talks and things every now and then as part of my sort of... Um, part of being an author, people want to know, uh, how did you become... or How can I become um, published? And I always... I remember going back to my agent um, and asking him, what, why do you reject unpublished writers? And he says, because the book is boring. So ultimately, I think it comes down to that. It can't be boring. If, if a book is boring, I, 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 I won't finish it these days. Now, it can be not boring for any number of reasons. Plot, character, it's just a, a, a unique world I've never heard before, just a country I've never read about before that type of thing so but if it's boring i won't finish it if it's not boring i will finish it it's, it's pretty much as simple as that yeah, yeah i agree and i i do exactly the same if the mm. if it's boring i i never finished it and i have to tell you that in your case the plot and characters are really really incredible uh, <laughs> thank you very much so yeah yeah congrats and um, so i think that you have uh, answered the next question that is uh, what do you think is left over in a book i think that the uh, I, I mean, I remember reading a Michael Conley book once, and when it when it finished, I actually I did that to it, and I sort of patted it as if that as in that was just excellent. Um, some books stay with me a lot longer than others. I'll be I remember, I'll be thinking about them for for days, sometimes even weeks after. Some I'll just read and go, yeah, that was excellent. That was a really good book, and then I'll just move on to the next one without thinking too much about it. Um, so I get, I'll get enjoyment from books that have like had a real impact on me, and books that have just been a really interesting, fun read. Nothing too deep, no hidden mythologies or meanings or themes or anything like that. But they're still fantastic reads. They just, they just might not have as much impact on you. So it's all good. I mean, reading's reading, and reading is better than not reading. Simple as that. Okay, so now questions about you, like a writer, okay? Uh, the first one is, uh, how and where do you get inspired to create your stories, your characters? Well, I, I live in a beautiful part of the country. I mean, it really is stunning where I live. Um, the Lake District is very close. Uh, I can, within five minutes, I'm out in the country and I can walk the dog and not see a single person. So, A, that's... It's an inspiring place to write about, and I do write about that. Uh, also, it gives me time when I'm out good because you're not being constantly stopped to talk by people or just being distracted because you can see somebody else. So I get a lot of time to think, um, or my mind just clears. And when my mind is clear, it just sort of goes everywhere and I get all these weird ideas. Sometimes I carefully plot things out. Sometimes I just start writing and see what's gonna and see what's gonna happen. So I don't have a a sort of very definite way of answering that question really because each book is 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 different. So the puppet show um which is out in Spain as El Show de las Marionetas was uh, yes, I, yes. I, it's I, 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 I came to Mad I was in Madrid um yes I was in Madrid last year um, to do a, a um a tour with the um the publisher and I had to um say the book in Spanish followed by my name um and I was practicing so hard and getting the Spanish right I forgot how to say my own name it was really funny um yes yeah, so the plot of sorry the first draft of um the puppet show took 25 days at all less than a month to actually get done oh. the the curator which is the third book in the post series which is it was out in uh, the UK last last month uh, last year sorry that took eight months to write so my writing process is it's not consistent all I know is I, I start every book on the 1st of December and if I do that I know I'll be finished it by the 1st of December next year 
it does it doesn't take me more than a, a, a book and that that's from that's writing it editing it sending it to my agents my agent will then say well maybe you want to think about that that type of thing and i know i can get everything done by the first of december yeah. okay and um do you always carry a notebook or someone else uh, with you to to write down the ideas that come uh, to your head or during the day uh, you are able to disconnect and not think at all about uh, what you are writing no i i am always thinking <laughs> i i used to carry a notebook now i just tend to i um, just do voice recordings on my phone or or use the notes function or i'll send emails to myself so i mean this morning um I woke, I woke up about seven o'clock. By half past seven, I'd already sent myself seven emails about what I wanted to write that day, just lines of dialogue, that type of thing. So once I'm thinking about it, I never stop thinking about it. And because I'm always thinking what's going to be in the next book as well, quite often I'm sending myself stuff about the book I'm writing now. At the minute, it's Poe. It's the six Poe book. It's not due out until 2000. 23 over here so i'll be sending myself stuff like that i'm sending my stuff about what will be the seventh book i'm also writing a standalone uh thriller set in new york this year so i'm sending myself stuff about that when i when when things think about it i'm writing a short story uh for a collection which uh, which is about halloween So this morning I was sending just a few stupid lines about <laughs> about that. So my head is just like that yeah. all the time. It never stops. I mean, and, and and if I'm if I'm if I go to, if I try to go to sleep when I'm still thinking about a book, I can't I can't get to sleep at wow. all. So sometimes I have to just pick up my Kindle like that, because I know that'll send me to sleep. I won't say that, but as soon as I wake up, I'm thinking about it again. It's not very restful being me. Yeah. Well, it's a good uh, new for. For me and all the readers that love your books, that you're mine and your head never stops. So it means that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm. Next question is um, before writing, uh, are you clear about everything? Uh, do you know exactly what will it happen uh, in the novel from beginning to the end? Or do you improvise while are you writing? A bit of both. I, I... I wouldn't go as far to say I'm like Lee Child, who just starts writing with no idea where it's going to go. And I'm certainly not like Jeffrey Deva, who writes um, a 150-page sort of um, outline plan of what's going to happen. I, I I know what the crime is, generally. I know that in, in quite d good detail. So I work out that, then I'll just sort of put Poe and Tilly into that situation. I'll say, well, go on and solve it. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll know, I have a few key scenes that I want to write um, and I'll have um, a book, um, a file, sorry, with all the notes and emails I've been sending myself from the previous, uh, all lumped together in, in, a, in a sort of rough um, order of, of the things will be going in. But there's always surprises that will take me wherever I'm, that, that I'm not surprised. But eventually I'll, I'll go around my little detour, which I'll think is fun. And then I'll come back to the main, the the, the plan, as, as as it were. And I, it always seems to work. I'm always worried it won't. Sometimes I massively go over what I'm supposed to write. I, I wrote 140,000 words for Po5. I'm only supposed to write 100,000. So I have to chip away uh, 40,000 of that. I didn't actually make it. I, 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 it. It went over by about 5,000 words. So I lost about 35,000 words, which is pretty much half a book but it works for me it doesn't work for everyone else okay and um, uh, which of your novels are you most proud of <sighs> you know because I, 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 I read that question before and I don't know I mean the easy answer would be say the one I'm writing now because that's the one I'm most excited actually the, the one I'm most excited about is always the one I'm about to write next which in this case is my thriller Um, set in New York the but if I'm being honest I would say so far my favorite um, my favorite will be the sixth novel the one I'm writing now but just because I think that's pretty special but it's not finished yet so I won't cheat I'm going to say Black Summer because I thought it was um, I did I did two things which what one I thought was quite brave and that was I because Tilly was such a favorite character of everyone from the puppet show I, I held her back a bit 
So she isn't in the book from the start. She, she's br briefly mentioned on screen, but she's not in the book until about the third, until about a third of the way through it. So that was quite a, quite a brave thing I did. Um, another thing I just wanted to give Tilly, a, because at, in the puppet show she, she was able to solve everything. I wanted to give her a problem that she had never come across before, um, just to put her under a bit of bit of pressure. In the creator, though, I did something quite. Um, horrible to one of the key characters, um, which again was something I, I wanted to do quite early in this series, just so that you never get too confident that everything's going to be okay for everything because it isn't. Um, so you, 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 you can't just think it's going to be Tilly and Poe and Steph Flynn and all the others forever because it, it might not be. Uh, okay. And um for those readers uh, who have not read any of your books, which one do you recommend they start with? Uh, the Puppet Show is, is the is, is the obvious place because it, it's a it's it's quite a cool story. It's it's quite dark. It's quite funny in places, but it also introduces the characters. I, I always if I discover a new author i will invariably start at the beginning yeah. of, a, of, a, of a series of so series. i just do that's how i prefer i know there are um readers who can just go dip in and out wherever they want in the series and the books are written to be enjoyed as standalone so you don't have to have read the first one to enjoy the second one but if, if you can start at the beginning i would advise yeah. that with any with any author yeah yeah i finished now to to read the uh, black summer and I always said that it's not necessary to read the first one, but I recommend to read the mm. puppet show because it's very when the the, the Washington Poe and Tilly Bradshaw when they meet it's together and all, all, I think that is very I recommend a lot to read first. Yeah. I mean, uh, one of the the problems that well not problem but one of the things I have to do every book is reintroduce Washington Poe, Tilly yeah. Bradshaw, Stephanie Flynn. And do it in a way that isn't boring to readers who already know the series, but isn't too long-winded. Um, so I have to find a different way of doing it every time, which is which which is a, a challenge sometimes, particularly when I'm writing it for the sixth time. Like yeah. Tilly Bradshaw is a, is a genius. There's only so many ways you can say that. Which you don't get that problem if all you're doing is writing standalones because you're introducing a new character in, in every book. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. for some that of the is... authors who are like for example, Lee Child, or well, Lee Child doesn't really do it anymore, but for some of the long-running crime sagas in the UK, I mean, they're on like 25 books and things like that, and they've got 25 times they've been describing the same character. And, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and maybe I'm not looking forward to that as much, but it'll be fine. Okay, uh, one, what have you enjoyed writing the most? Um... I think I'm going to say my first ever book, which was um, called Born in a Burial Gown. And it, it was my first, it was the first book I ever managed to finish. And it got me my first publishing deal. And I passed a finished copy of it to my, to um, a fellow called David Headley, who was an agent. And I said, here, David, just read this. He read it. He asked me to send him anything else I've read. And then he signed me as his sort of um, client from that, so it's Born in the Burial Gown, although the puppet show has been a massive success in the UK and all over the world, actually, yeah. um, it wouldn't have happened without this very first book, which was with a very small publisher. Um, it only sold out 250 copies, which is nothing. And, but it, it, it was the stepping stone for everything, everything that followed. And now my current publisher, the ones who published the, the Washington Post series have bought it off my old publisher and they reissued it last January in the, in the UK. So it's actually, it's found a home again now and pe more people are going back. They're reading the Washington Post series and thinking, what else has this guy written? So they're going back and buying the first series, which, which is nice. Um, but when I look back at it, it's, it's, it's a, it's not the same. I'm, not, I'm a much different writer to, to what I was then. So people, some people are disappointed, saying, "Well, like, it's it's not as good." And I said, "Well, of course it's not as good. I, I wrote it like five years before the book that you're reading now." But it's fine. That's still probably my favorite, mm -hmm. the favorite book I I um, took to write, just because it right. it proved to me that I could actually 
I could actually write a book. Okay, and uh, what has been the most difficult thing to, to write for you? The third Poe book, uh, The Curator, because uh, I didn't have a clue what to do because I had thought I was going to be writing what would end up being uh, Poe 4, actually, Dead Ground. But when I um, said to my editor, this is what I'm going to read, this is what I'm going to write, and I had it all planned out. She said, no, I don't want that. Um, so I, because usually I've got, a, I, I've been thinking about the next one for a few months. So when she said, you can't have that, I actually ha I had nothing, literally nothing to start from. I, I did actually have to start from scratch. And that's why it took eight months to do, because I had all these different ideas going through my head. And when I got to the end of the first draft, it was 140,000 words long. And um, I was able to cut out lots because I had sort of Egyptians in it at one point. It was it was a mess because I was trying out different things. Um, so I got there in the end and it's, it seems to be everyone's favourite at, at the minute, which I don't know what that says about my writing process. But yeah, so I had to I had to come up with something from scratch for that so that was um was a challenge but again i like being challenged so it didn't bother me it was just it was just something i had to do and i had to knuckle down and i knew i had a year to do it so i just i just knuckled down and did it and uh a tip for those people who who would like to write a book Yeah, I mean, I get asked this a lot. Um, a lot of people will give you the advice of uh, write what you know. And I think that's terrible advice. I always advise people to write what they enjoy reading because that way you won't get bored with your own writing. And I think that's very important. So my, my, my writing um, probably has more in common with the American crime writers than the UK crime writers because I prefer reading American American crime authors to UK crime authors. That's nothing against the UK crime authors, and I do read them, just that my go-to readers are sort of Michael Connolly and Dennis Lehane and Don Winslow and Carl mm -hmm. Hyerson and uh, Harlan Coburn and, and, and some, of the, uh, some of the smaller ones. But that, that's, just, that's just me. So when I was starting to write, I, without even thinking, developed a style which is more reminiscent of the American writers. And I had the shorter, punchier paragraphs because that's how I prefer to read. Um, so, yeah, write what you like rather than write what you know. Because write what you know is quite restrictive anyway. I mean, the wonderful science fiction books um, and the fantasy books like Lord of the Rings. I mean, J.R. Tolkien didn't know about dwarfs and elves and um, hobbits and things because nobody did because he invented them. So write what you like. Don't write what you know. Good. Yeah. Okay. Now let's uh, talk about the uh, Washington Post series. Okay. Uh, well, the second Washington Post book that I, I have it here. I, uh, I haven't got mine yet, so I, I, haven't, no? I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> no. well, I've, I've seen pictures of it, but yeah. I've, um, that's the first time I've seen it move, actually. So I, 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 I get six um, free copies off my publisher, okay. uh, but they haven't, they haven't arrived yet. So um, if okay. there's anything like... Go on. <laughs> no, uh, it, it, it has been just released in, in Spain after the, the great success, uh, the puppet show. And um, I think that you are actually uh, writing the, the sixth in the series, is it? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and you have also written a, a, a book with three short stories starring Washington yes. Poe and Tilly Bradshaw. Um, so... Would you like to, to highlight something in, in particular about these books? Uh, just a, a brief presentation of, of, of the next Washington OS books that will arrive in, in Spain during the next yeah. month or um, years. Well, the, the next one that you get in is um, the short stories. I, I know this because uh, my publisher bought them. Uh, they've, they've got a cover. Um, so I think they're out in May. It, it, I mean, it is quite short. And it's very much um, books written during COVID. So um, in the first one, sorry, not the first one, um, in one of them, Poe and Tilly have to self-isolate together uh, because Poe starts coughing and he, he might have mm. uh, COVID. 
uh, and they start bickering because they're getting on each other's nerves. So they so they end up solving a cold case. Um, the the other two stories are both cold cases as well. So that would be quite it's it's quite a fun um, trio of stories. Then uh, you've got the curator, which I'm, I I, I um, am fairly confident that my Spanish publisher will buy. And that's um, a very dark book. And like I said before, something terrible might happen to one of the characters. In the UK, we're about to publish the fourth book. That's out in a couple of weeks, a few weeks, sorry. It's mm -hmm. called Dead Ground. And that's about um, a, a heist, a, a robbery in a, in a um, uh, safety deposit box vault, which, uh, which it goes right, actually, but everyone thinks it goes wrong and Poe gets involved in, in that. And he ends up working with the security services at some point. Uh, we've got The Botanist coming next year in the UK, which is about a poisoner who can seemingly walk through walls. And I'm writing the sixth one now, which I haven't really decided how to tell people about it yet. But at some point, you'll be getting them all. You'll just be a couple of years behind, maybe a year behind at some point. Wow. So <clears throat> very, very good news for the Washington Post. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot coming. And, I, and I've got loads more ideas as well. So I'm not stopping anytime soon. Wow, it's incredible. Six booths in the series and another one with three short stories. So, wow. Okay, and um, next question is Washington Poe and, and Tilly Burchill are two opposite characters, uh, but at the same time complement each other perfectly. Yeah. Uh, do you think this is one of the main reasons because readers like these characters so much? I, th I think it is. I, 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 I think there are a lot of very good crime authors out there um and a lot of them are better writers than me i mean i'm happy to admit that but for whatever reason they haven't written characters that have connected with readers now i i, I think if it was just washington poe on his own it would not have attracted the attention it has if it was just tilly on it on her own it probably wouldn't have either because it, it would have been quite a difficult thing to read you it certainly Other than the very first scene in the puppet show, everything is told through Washington Poe's eyes. So you don't get, you don't know what Tilly's thinking. You just see po what Poe is thinking. She is thinking. If you see, it's basically through Poe's eyes, so, which which allows me to sort of have that sort of um, back and forth between them. And sometimes they'll disagree about things. Sometimes Tilly will get exasperated because Poe doesn't understand something she's telling them. It also allows me to explain things to the readers because Tilly's explaining something complicated to Poe and, and getting it down to to use really simple language, which is which is quite um, a neat idea for, for, for me as well. But absolutely, it is the relationship and the, and the friendship that they have yeah. uh, together and the way it develops um, over the over the series. Because I'm at the point now in the book where Poe's actually engaged to be married. Not to Tilly, um, but she's more excited than he is, and, and 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 things like that. I'm not saying he will get married. That's um, that's a later story, I suspect. But it's the, it's it's. I, I think her sort of un, unbridled enthusiasm and this infectious sort of curiosity she has with the world, set against his sort of dark moods. And his um, misanthropic nature, where everything everything annoys him, and um, so you have them to like that. And it, it, it's fun. It's 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 fun to write, and because it's fun to write, I want to keep doing it. I mean, if I was writing just from Poe's point of view without Tilly at all, it would be quite a dark. It would be quite dark books to read, I think, um, because I, every now and then Tilly will just say something funny. And lighten up the mood for everyone. If, if people don't get too despondent when they're reading my books, because there's always Tilly to sort of help you, yeah, to, to lift to lift people's moods. I mean, so I, th I think that's one of the reasons it works. Now, I think people don't even realise that Tilly sort of Tilly is the one who helps you through the books, particularly the curator, because the curator um, is is the darkest one yet. Um, and if you think what the puppet show was about, that's saying something, isn't it? Um, But because Tilly's there making you laugh at the same time as all this horrible stuff's happening, you get through it and you're laughing at the end and you're smiling and everything's okay. And therefore you'll buy the next one, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Uh, next question is uh, uh, both Washington Po and, and you. Uh, you are from Cumbria. Uh, you have been in the in the army. You are interested in criminology. Um, so, is the character Po Bast based on your own person? Um, my editor says not. My editor says my previous character was based on me. She says Everson Fluke is who you are. Washington Po is who you want to be which I thought was quite funny. Um, no, I mean, apart from ob obvious similarities in our backgrounds, I was a probation officer, he's a police officer, obviously. We were both in the army um, and we're both from Cumbria. There's, there's very little. Uh, certainly, there's things about Poe I admire, his sort of determination and his unwavering quest for justice and, and, and things, his work ethic and his ability to eat nothing but sausages and black pudding. Um, without sort of having serious bowel disorders. Um, all these things are, are, are sort of quite admirable qualities. But I, I, I think when I'm putting any character, it, it's good to put as much, as, as much of yourself as you can in a character for no other reason. It's easier to remember then if, you, if you're talking about something that you've, that you've done. Um, but I, I, would, I would never profess to be as cool as, as Washington Poe is. I can, I can say as I'm as sarcastic and rude and probably as annoying to be around, um, but I, I, I certainly wouldn't say that I'm um, as brave or as intelligent as him. Okay. Um, short, cap chap short chapters uh, with an exciting ending. Uh, it's impossible to stop reading. So do you think this is one of the keys of the success of your novels? The short chapters, especially. I think, especially, so. I think. I, I, yeah, I, I, I think when, when, when um, you, you'll hear the word pace every now and then, it's a fast paced book and things like that. Now, some people will get confused and think that means it's got a lot of action in it. That's not what that means at all. It means that when you get to the end of a chapter, yeah. you, there's, no easy, there's no easy place to stop. So, very rarely will. One of my chapters finished with Poe went to bed because if Poe goes to bed, if you're reading that book and you're looking for somewhere to stop, you're right, I'll stop here. But you won't. If, if Poe goes to bed, the next, the next, very next line, but then there was a knock on the door and you think, well, I need to know who's at the door now. So then you're in the next chapter. And because it's only a couple of pages long, you'll read that. And before long, you've read the book in two sittings, which is... And if you read a book quickly, you, it means you've enjoyed it, usually. And um, you'll buy the next one. And because because that's what I like reading. I, I, I like reading books that just push you forward, as in there's no place to stop. So it's just a, it's a, it's a device, it's a trick. But it's also, I, I, I don't spend too much time thinking about it. I, I seem to be able to do it quite naturally. Um, just because simply I, they're the books I've read for the last 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and the last question, uh, do you plan on Washington Poe and Tilly Bradshaw appearing in many more books? So I know that you are writing the, the sixth, but do you plan that they will appear in more, more and more books? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I have at least two more planned after this and I will keep writing them as long as my publishers keep keep wanting them because I enjoy doing it. There's no reason for me to stop. I'm not saying all the characters around the side um, on the periphery will survive, but I imagine three three people will. That's Washington Poe, Teddy Bradshaw and Edgar the dog. Those three are going to be in from the time because you can't kill a dog. You certainly can't kill Tilly, and if you kill Poe, who's gonna who's gonna tell the story in the first place? Okay, okay, the perfect, Mr. Craven. Uh, that's all the the questions. Uh, thank you very much for your for your time. It has been a, a pleasure. I have to tell you that uh, I, I sincerely I, I love your books. I I, I love Washington Poe series. That's incredible. Uh, thank you very much, and congratulations for your success. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. To you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Muy bien, pues hasta aquí la entrevista con MW Craven. 
¿Qué tal? ¿Qué os ha parecido? Ha sido fantástica. Muchas gracias de nuevo a Mr. Craven. Y supongo que contentos todos los fans de la serie de Washington Poe, porque como habéis visto, vienen más libros de Washington Poe y Tilly Bracho. Como siempre digo, suscribiros a nuestro canal, es muy buena oportunidad para descubrir nuevos libros. Y estamos también en redes sociales, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter y no olvidéis nuestra web, www.blogliterario.com. Hasta la próxima.